But I just um, I just want our audience to to understand what is going on around the world right now. Um, this little gal right here is I don't know if she's from England, Australia. I'm not sure where she's from. But I, it's only it's only a few minutes on this video. I just want I just want y'all to watch it right quick and. When we get through, I'll be on the other side of it. Okay. Like I said, this is one I sent you. So I don't know if you got a chance to watch it yet. Oh, yeah. Yep. I went to sleep the night of fun. And it was just a normal. I just went to sleep like normal. But then I woke up in the morning and I had both of my sons laying either side of me. I was completely sandwiched in and I could not move. And it was nine o'clock, which is unusual for me because I usually wake up pretty early before anyone else in my household. I make the coffee, I go sit, read my Bible. But this morning I was still tired and I went and got in my son's bed, which is the room I'm in right now. And I lay down and I went back to sleep and I fell straight back to sleep. So as soon as I fell to sleep, I started to dream. And the first place that I went in my dream is I was in the universe. I was in space and super random, but I was sitting on a, like a, a boogie board. And I was sitting on the boogie board. I had both legs either side and I sat there and I'm just looking around and I'm like, wow, this is so amazing. I wasn't afraid, I wasn't scared. I was just looking around at the stars, but beneath me, I could see the earth. So I just sat there for a while and it's so amazing because God knows how much I love space and how obsessed I am with the universe. So I just sat there looking around and I'm thinking, wow, this is so awesome. This is so cool. And I'm completely at peace. And then I wasn't in space anymore and I experienced this. I was sucked in, in a second straight onto the earth. And this is why guys, I have taken a couple of days to process this dream because things have become clearer to me and God has revealed new things to me. So that's why I didn't want to rush and make the video so that I could really dwell on things and pray about things. Immediately in a major city, it reminded me of like Chicago or New York or something like that. And I'm immediately catapulted into an apartment. This apartment was above like a restaurant, you know, like how you see in cities and stuff, they have like a restaurant on the bottom and then the top floor is an apartment. I'm immediately catapulted into an apartment and I'm, I'm standing there in this apartment and there's a man laying on the floor and he, I can, it's so wild because like I can see it in my mind right now. Like this dream has really stayed with me and I can, I can see myself standing in that room right now. I can see the man, I can see the family. It's so, so powerful when God does something. Living room and there is a man laying on the floor and he is dead. And I know that he's dead but he has a family surrounding him. There are women just laying on him, weeping, crying, and no one can see me. I am just standing there as an observer and I'm watching um, and this man is dead. And then all of a sudden, I see his, say this is his body laying on the ground. I see his soul lift up out of his body and then it goes, and just gets sucked into the ground and kind of like levitate off of his body and then get sucked through the ground. The next moment that I'm going to share with you guys is a most favorite moment of this entire dream. I'm standing there and I'm watching this and I'm not afraid because it was as almost as if I was in the spiritual realm. So nothing was tripping me out because 
or scaring me because I was in the spiritual realm and it was just okay for me to see a soul leave a body and leave because I'm in the spiritual realm. Uh, and all of a sudden, sorry guys. <laughs> Sudden, Jesus appears and I can't really see his face because he has somewhat of like a like a not a hood but like a, a covering around his face it was like a cream covering like flicked over his shoulders type thing so I couldn't really see his face nobody's worthy to see his face and what he does is he appears next to me and he takes a hold of my right hand oh my gosh this is how like personal with us god is guys Isaiah 41 13 Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand do not fear I will help you I have been meditating on that verse for like two weeks I'm so sorry but that's just how personal God is with us like I've been meditating on that verse for two weeks and he took a hold of my hand and it isn't like he said it to me audibly but like I felt it in my spirit you know you know those, those times when God speaks to you in your spirit and you just feel it and you just know that it's God he took a hold of my hand and that verse just immediately came to my mind in Isaiah when he says I take hold of your right hand and I had this moment of like he's always there he's always holding our hand just like that all the time he's always there he's always holding your hand and so we're standing there and he's holding my hand and it's as if he just came beside me but then we jump you know like in the movies when you see people jump but then like they jump into like a different place we jumped but then we fell through the apartment building then we began to fall through the ground and then we began to fall through the earth until we didn't we landed in hell it's kind of like the outskirts of hell um I, before I tell you what Jesus said to me, I want to kind of confess something to my brothers and sisters in Christ and, and tell you something. As a Christian woman, my biggest struggle as a Christian has been hell, believing in hell, believing that it's real. Um, I have a lot of family and a lot of friends that I love that are not born again and that don't know Jesus and so hell has been a really big struggle for me to process and to believe um but I've prayed for a very long time that God would give me a dream to help me understand hell and not to understand it but like to feel something tangible about it because I've struggled with it so much, struggled with believing that it even exists. So me and Jesus are standing on top of this mountain and this mountain is kind of like made out of charcoal. It's like black and it's like the blackest black charcoal, kind of like reminded me of a volcano of some sort, but it's flat and me and Jesus are standing there and I look around me and I see nothing like if you've ever been out in the ocean and you can see no land around you that's what it was like there was nothing around me there was no sky there was no atmosphere there was no sky it was like just dust dusty and smoky and as i looked over the edge of this mountain there was just a fire surrounding me 
like it was just flames there was nothing but flames there was nothing but flames and me and jesus on this mountain and it was like orange and red around me like the atmosphere was like orange and red and i knew that this mountain was protecting me from this place this mountain was a metaphor for jesus i know that and jesus said to me was my child this place is real he said at times i can see that you doubt and don't believe that this place exists my people avoid talking about this place but not talking and warning others is not the will of god he said i spoke about this place often now go and do the same the last thing he said to me the end is near and so this was an answer to prayer for me because I had prayed about this for a long time. I know that this is a warning for the church because he specifically said, um, us believers, the church, avoid talking about this place. And I'm guilty of that. I'm guilty. I can preach all day long. I love to talk about the love of God. I love to talk about how incredible and amazing Jesus is. But I don't want to talk about hell. It makes people uncomfortable. It makes me uncomfortable. But he clearly tells us in his word to preach the gospel. He clearly talks about hell in his word. And he clearly told me in this dream that I doubt in this place. You see, God knows our heart and he sees my heart and he sees my struggle. He sees all of our struggles and he sees how much I struggle with the concept of hell. And he clearly calls me out in it. I see that you doubt in this place, Roxanne. I see that you doubt this place. Revelation 21, 8 says, But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, for the murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur. I saw that. I saw that in this dream. I saw the fire. I saw it was like an ocean of fire, which is the second death. Matthew 10 28 and do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell wait and let's just talk really quickly about the fact that Jesus said the end is near <sighs> prophecy is being revealed throughout this planet the end is near this was also a warning not only to believers to rise up, get strong, start preaching the gospel and being brave. Number two, to stop sugarcoating this gospel and wanting everyone to feel all warm and fuzzy inside when what we should be doing is preaching the truth, no matter how uncomfortable it makes people or ourselves, that we should honor God before we honor anyone else and their feelings. And number three, that the end is near the end is near guys look around you look at this planet look at people's behaviors look at the riots and the sickness and the natural disaster there is just so much prophecy being revealed that the end is near our sin has caused us to has created a barrier between us and God. God is perfect, he is holy, he is bliss, he is love, he is pure, he is perfect, and we are sinful creatures. The Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Hell is a place that people will go if they die in this life without Jesus Christ. But I wanna tell you that there is good news. And the good news is that God is so merciful and so loving towards us that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die in our place for our sins. 
that he looked at you personally and said, I love them so much that I am going to send my perfect perfect son to die in their place for everything that they have done wrong in their life so that they can be reconciled to me now because Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose again on the third day that means that we are reconciled to God through Jesus Christ because he is the atonement for our sins John 3:16 says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but in order that the world might be saved through him we need a savior we need a lifeline we need forgiveness we need to be reconciled to god romans 1 16 says for i am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of god for salvation to everyone who believes to the jew first and also to the greek ephesians 2 8 says for by grace you have been saved through faith it is not of your own doing i love this it is the gift of god not as a result of work so that no one may boast it is a free gift in jeremiah it says if you seek me you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart and the last verse that i want to read to you guys is is john 3 3 jesus is sitting and having a conversation with nicodemus and surely i tell you that no one no one can see the kingdom of god unless they have been born again it tells us that it is God's will that no one would perish, that no one would go to hell. God wants all of us to come to the knowledge of truth, repentance and be saved. And Jesus, you have to put your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ and accept the free gift of the cross. That is my dream, guys. I pray that it blessed your heart. I pray that you would share this video and get this urgent message out because the end is near. So I pray that you would share this video. Make to leave me a comment down below, like this video and make sure that you subscribe if you are not subscribed already. My precious brothers and sisters in Christ, I love you so much. You have no idea. I love you so much and Jesus loves you as well. God bless you all and I'll see you on my next one. Bye-bye. Wow. That is a pretty powerful one. Yeah. You know what? There's uh, videos like that just keep coming. Yeah. They just keep coming and it's, you know, that's, that's why the call so strongly this morning to, um, you know, the word, the, the word, hold on a second. I don't know where that's coming from. Hold on. The the word that God gave me this morning for, for people was to repent. Repent. Get your life right with God. And, and everything that we have been doing in the upper room, um, oh my gosh, it, God has been... He's been speaking and talking to us and showing us what is coming. Uh, for those of us that have been there the whole time and been there to, to just unfold the book of Revelation, it, you know what? It's not like anything I've ever been taught. It's, um, I was telling people this morning, the book of Daniel says that, that God had told Daniel he showed Daniel what was coming in the end. But then he told Daniel, take this little book and seal it up until the time of the end. And then when you go into Revelation, it tells you that that book is open. And once that book is open, that the knowledge of Revelation is going to flow. Well, first off, that tells us that we are in the end. And if we're in the end, then we really need to start looking into that book of Revelation. You know, you, you look at our world right now. Our world is in a mess. Good night. If there's ever a time that sin and evil has run rampant, it is now. 
And if if people look at what's going on today and they don't think, good Lord, I need to get my life right with the with the Lord, then I, I don't know what to say about you. you you've got to be spiritually dead if you can't see what's going on. But my job, my job is to call us to repentance. My job is to to make sure that each and every person that comes here, has the opportunity to number one know that god loves him you know what that little girl that little girl with that message it's uh (laughs) she has no idea how spot on she was no idea how spot on that that dream was and and that just comes from us studying in the upper room you know i was getting message from red cajun girl about that and it she's been in there with us the whole time too and it's like god's god's telling people all over the world hello wake up i'm coming hello wake up i'm coming and and he doesn't just tell people that to scare them and so that people will go oh my gosh oh my god no he god gives us warnings and he tells us things to prepare us and it's to prepare us for what is coming it the word of god says that he does not desire that any man go to hell he didn't create hell for man he created it for the angels that that rebelled with satan that's why hell was created it was never created for man but but when you don't acknowledge the lord when you most a lot of people that go to hell do you know what they're going to go to hell for for denying the sun it it won't be it won't be for all the stuff that they're doing right now it won't be for any of that because until you have made jesus the lord of your life what the sin that you are most responsible for is denying the sun and there is going to be no bigger regret regret than knowing that you had the opportunity to make Jesus the Lord of your life, and yet you chose not to. And now for eternity, you are separated from a holy God. That's the torment. That's the torment that you will live with every day for eternity, that you are separated from a holy God. And, and she was saying that in her dream that it was dark, that she couldn't see anything. The word of God says that the darkness is so dark that it will make people eat their tongue. It's so dark they can't take it. I don't know if any of y'all have ever been in dark that dark. I have. Where you put your hand right here. And you you can't see it. You know it's there because you can feel your breath coming off of it. But you can't see it. That, believe it or not, that is a torment. That is most a uh, most ex- in the in the largest, widest, hottest, driest right. desert. Right. You can think of yeah. right. Think about think about what the rich man said. The rich man said when when he died and he he went to hell. He said. Father, send, send Lazarus, who's over there, send him over here to just touch his finger in water and cool my tongue. And it's like, it's continual torment. And I don't want anybody to have to go through that. Mm. You know, I, 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 I don't, there's a lot of people on here I don't know. But just because I don't know you, doesn't mean that I love you. And yeah, you're right. Research IT. It is eternal. Think about it. You know, we say, I'm going to love you forever and ever. What does that really mean? For a lot of people, it's, I'm going to love you until you do something wrong to me. And then that's it. We're over. That's it. But with God, eternal is eternal. You know, you can have the gift of eternal life, or you can have the gift of of eternal torment. Personally, I don't want that gift of eternal torment. I don't want that for my children, and I sure don't want that for my granddaughters. 
So I continually pump the word of God into them. But it's, but it's one of those, that darkness that she spoke of um, is torment. You, she said she's seen flames. That's, that's torment. But, but I, I think of it this way, and God showed me, showed me it this, this way one time. Think of everything in this world that you don't like. Now, I don't like snakes. I don't like spiders. I kill like nine times out of 10, I'll kill a spider. I'll kill a snake. I don't like snakes. But everything that you don't